All right, we're back again here with part two. So last time I was talking about with the spring here, uh, just saying don't uh, don't touch it, don't mess around with it. You don't really have to uh, do anything with it. So put this unit here aside, and now that we have our uh, our bottom section here, what we want to do is with our small screwdriver, um, one that's really thin. So you want to take it and flip it over, and where the screw is for this second gear here. You want to put it up here, and um, if you want to, you can use the back end of your screwdriver, and you can tap it. You might have to tap it quite a bit, but once you do, you should be able to get this pin out. Uh, this isn't the real pin. This is just an example pin. The pin that's in here doesn't have any grooves on it, so uh, it pops out and just slides back in. Uh, remove your gear. Remove your top gear here. You'll probably notice there might be a washer on top. It's a black plastic one. Remove that if you can. If you lose it, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But uh, should come off uh, fairly easy. If it doesn't come off uh, really simply, it's just because it's a little dry. You can add a little bit of oil to the inside of that and change it. Also, uh, then you should be able to remove your spindle, and uh, you should find a plastic washer here too so try and keep those aside. Uh, on the bottom here you'll probably notice that there might be a little bit of uh, oxidizing or uh, some sort of crust on the bottom here. Uh, if there is, and if it is preventing your spindle from spinning properly when you put it back in, if it doesn't spin freely what you can do is use some sandpaper or use a, a file and go around this area and smooth it out. Try uh, not to touch this uh, bushing in the middle. You don't really want to mess with that. You cause yourself another headache. Um, and going back to your spindle, you want to uh, take and look at your spindle, make sure that uh, there's no scratches and no huge groove marks in it, which there shouldn't be. And uh, you'll probably notice that there'll be some belt remnants around the outside of it. If there are, uh, you can use your fingernail, and you can use uh, a cloth with some grease remover and remove it from the outside here. Uh, don't attempt to remove it using a screwdriver or using your X-Acto knife. You'll cause a lot of scratches and grooves in here that you don't want, so don't use anything hard to remove it. Once you get it all polished up, um, you can take your oil that you have and put a couple of drops of oil inside here and then you can take your spindle and you can pop your spindle back in and should spin, uh, hopefully it should spin better than before. Um, what you do want to notice too is when you look at the top part of the spindle if you turn it you'll see that there's a dot in here. Um, what that dot is from, it's from that grub screw that was from the top piece that you removed. So what you want to do to make it a little easier to see, use your black marker, go around and find that dot, and then put a mark on it so you can see it clearly. Like that. Try to get a fine point marker. Um, if you get one that's too big, uh, it'll, it'll probably cause you a lot of uh, headache too as well. Um, the reason why is because, um, similar to a laser and the way that a laser is set up, uh, the precision on this is, is pretty uh, close. It has to be really close in order for it to work. If you have it just a little bit off, it'll be very temperamental and it won't want to read your disc. So make sure you have that hole lined up and you have it pinpointed uh, exactly. Uh, if not, you're going to run into a lot of problems. Uh, once you get that finished, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that rubber piece that uh, we were talking about at the beginning and this rubber piece here and we're going to use our ruler and we're going to use our X-Acto knife here and uh, we're going to make a belt. So with this rubber, try and lay it down on a flat surface. You can use either the ruler to make the... Um, to measure out how wide the belt is or you can eye it up um, even better yet if you have like a T-square or if you have some sort of 
uh, like cutting device that can cut it flat that's even better but uh, since I don't uh, this is what I'm I'm forced to use but uh, what you want to do is make sure that this ruler um, or the belt itself is uh, around three centimeters try not to get it any bigger than that or any smaller than that uh, either way it'll either cause the belt to snap or it'll cause the belt to bind up so once you get it to uh, about three uh, for today just kind of eye it up what you'll do is you'll use your exacto knife and you'll want to put a cut here at the top first and then what you'll do is you'll go back and put a cut at the bottom um, the reason why is if you just went straight all the way through by the time you get to this last part you're going to wind up with the end part having a small bump in it and that small bump is going to cause you um, a, a lot of difficulty with this uh, with this pulley because it'll want to slip right off of it so make sure that you put a, a tab here and here and you have two uh, two cuts before you decide to cut the center part and if you do and you do it right you have a belt that looks similar to this um, this one I just cut a second ago and uh, this belt is uh, just eyeballed but it's about the same size uh, with this rubber uh, it's really uh, durable it doesn't have a lot of elasticity but it uh, it's really strong um, I've used uh, the belt that I have in this one here um, that I was showing you for the example for about six years and hasn't snapped yet so uh, if you try and use a rubber band you're gonna find that uh, the rubber bands gonna break on you within a week or two weeks so don't do it the cheap way do it the right way and use this so once you have this cut I'm gonna get your unit again and you want to put belts around here make sure that it goes around the uh, the pulley completely and if you want to if you're not good at remembering you can use your black marker and you can just put a mark here um, it's the most odd shaped one out of the three um, put a mark here so you know where you have to uh, stretch your belt out to and once you have your mark you want to take take your belt and stretch it over there and uh, just keep it there it's going to keep it in place for you uh, second you're just going to do the reverse and you're going to take your second gear put that back on make sure that the teeth are facing up here and put that like so get your pin and it's not going to slide in this easily this is just a uh, temporary um, example pin but once you have your pin in there you'll probably have to use your screwdriver to tap it back down so you just tap on it and um, don't tap it all the way back in uh, leave a little bit of space so that this gear can move a little bit if not it'll just bind up it'll be too tight so and then with your gaskets and stuff um, your little washers if you if you still have them around if you lost them it's no big deal but uh, put those back on. Put the washer there. Um, all right, now we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna get our, our unit back here again, and the uh, the assembly or the putting it back together uh, backwards is going to be uh, a little bit more challenging than taking apart the first time. But uh, because we're running a little bit low on video, uh, I'll make a third one here and we'll put it back together and uh, we'll finish this off here. So.